In the Kleisen condensation, you start with a simple ester, treat it with base, and you get a somewhat complicated product out of it. This beta keto ester has the same substituent attached to the two and four carbons. The reaction occurs because the enolate of one molecule of ester acts as a nucleophile to add to the carbonyl of another molecule of ester. We can follow that with air pushing. And in the second step, the ethoxy group leaves. This is a powerful reaction because it makes a carbon-carbon bond and creates a product that has very useful functionality, a ketone and an ester. There's an interesting application of this that makes it even more powerful. It allows you to create a ring while you're making the carbon-carbon bond. If these two R groups are attached to each other, so we're actually starting with a diester, then these two R groups in the product are attached to each other, and this makes a ring. Notice that in the ring, you'll have a ketone, and attached to the alpha carbon, you'll have an ester group. This approach works well to make five-membered rings and six-membered rings because the five- and six-membered ring sizes are favored. This intramolecular Kleisen condensation is called a Beekman condensation. To use this to make a five-membered ring, we need a diester that has six carbons in the chain. The enolate will be made at one alpha carbon. Because this is a symmetrical ester, it doesn't matter which alpha carbon we're looking at. Five carbons that will be in the ring when the anion at this carbon adds to the carbonyl of this ester. To help visualize this, I'm going to rewrite this structure. Now the numbering will be one and five. The anion will be here, and we'll picture addition to carbonyl like this. To make a five-membered cycle pentanone, and on the alpha carbon, we have the ester group. We can track the carbons. In this upper structure, here's the enolate carbon, which is now here, and which is now here in the product. And the carbonyl carbon that the nucleophile adds to is here, and here, and here. Making a six-membered ring is much the same. Now the carbons involved are one through six, so we'll make a six-membered ring and the enolate will be at this alpha carbon. To redraw the structure, to make it easy to visualize ring formation, this will be the first carbon in the ring. We can follow with the same numbering pattern. The enolate anion is here at this alpha carbon, and nucleophilic addition occurs to make a carbon-carbon bond here. So we end up with this cyclohexanone. We can track the carbons just to help us see it. Make this in a blue dot. And here. And the carbonyl that the nucleophile adds to is here, which is this one, which is this ketone carbon. So the intramolecular Kleisen, the Dieckmann condensation, is really useful for making cyclopentanones and cyclohexanones. It's seen wide use. Let me show you an example where the Dieckmann condensation was used twice in the same synthesis to make an important steroid, estrone. Steroids serve hormonal functions in humans, other animals, and even plants, so there are common synthetic targets because they are really useful compounds medically. As far back as 1948, Honor and Mischer reported a synthesis of estrone that used the Dieckmann condensation twice. In the steroid nomenclature, these rings are designated as A, B, C, D, and in this synthesis, both the C-ring and the D-ring were made using Dieckmann condensations. Take a look. It was first used to make ring C, up here. The alpha hydrogen to make an enolate was abstracted here, and that enolate added to the ester right below it. This makes a ketone with the ester functionality on the alpha carbon. And now we have ring C. Later in the synthesis, ring D was formed. Now the alpha hydrogen was abstracted at this carbon, it adds to the ester group right above it and makes a five-membered ring this time, not a six. We have a cyclopentanone with an ester group at the alpha carbon. In a few short steps, this tetracyclic compound was converted to estrone. Very elegant synthesis and insightful way of using the Dieckmann condensation. This reaction has been used widely and is very powerful.